Hi, welcome to this next SCBA reflection. It's great to have you, thank you for listening. We're not doing so many of these reflections now, not every week, but we will try and do uh, one or two at least a month uh, and hopefully you can catch up with these and hopefully they will encourage you and support you in whatever situation you find yourself. As we bring this uh, reflection, we of course always bring the love of the whole of the team and uh, we pray that you are blessed at this time. I recently have been on holiday to Scotland and I, I had the joy actually of traveling with my son Tim in his car, which did mean that we were able to share the driving on the way up and on the way down, of course. But it did mean that I had to put up with his music in the car. But on one occasion, he had a worship playlist that he was playing. And as I, we were listening to the songs together, one of the songs mentioned Joshua and, and the walls of Jericho. And I was struck by the story of how, how crazy, how ridiculous the story is. And so when I got home, I wanted to try and kind of just immerse myself back into that story. And so I want to take this reflection just to, to stop for a moment and think about the ridiculousness of God's command on Joshua's life to lead the people around the walls of Jericho and the ridiculousness of Joshua's faith to believe and to obey. If you look up the story of Joshua and Jericho, it begins in chapter 5 of Joshua. And I had actually forgotten that it actually begins with an encounter Joshua has with a man of God who represents God. We don't know if he's an angel, but he certainly represents God. So this man appears with this, this flashing sword before, before Joshua. And Joshua asks him this question. He, he asks him, are you for us or for our enemies? Or if you want, are you for us or against us? I, and I'm fascinated with that question because it's so human, isn't it? So often we become very polarised very quickly. Yet people are either with us or they're against us. The answer to the question, though, is neither. And I've been pondering that answer. What a great answer it is. You know, God is neither for us or against us. And the man goes on to say, the angel goes on to say, I come to you as commander of the Lord's army. And what I get from that is that I think what God is saying to Joshua is, Joshua, I'm not for you or against you. The question you should be asking is, are you for me? Are you with me? Joshua would have considered himself to be the commander of the Lord's army. He was battle hardened. He had been appointed and anointed by Moses to continue to lead the people of Israel. But actually God is coming to him and saying, Joshua, it's not about you. It's not about what you think. Well, it doesn't, it's not about your plans. It's not about your strategy. But it's about mine. Are you with me, Joshua? Or are you against me? Joshua, I think, gets it because Joshua bows before him and Joshua says, what message have you got for your servant? He suddenly puts himself into the right place. In these strange times, these times as we're coming out of COVID, I wonder whether actually for many of us, we are looking to God and saying, God, what is your plan? And let's be careful that we don't come to God and say, God, this is our plan. Are you for us or against us? But instead, we find that holy place, because it is a holy place, that holy place, where God speaks to us and God gives us his message, however ridiculous it might seem. I do love the detail of scripture. At the beginning of Joshua 6, it clearly says, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. 
I think what the writer is clearly trying to say is this was an obstacle that was not going to be easy to overcome. It was a huge challenge to the people of Israel. Joshua would have never seen anything like this. You know, all the battles that have gone on before were completely different. Now he was facing a fortified city that was going to be impossible to overcome. We will face new things as we come out of this period of COVID, but actually we're in a, a fast changing society anyway. We will face challenges that we have never faced as church, as God's people. And as we face those things, it is so crucial that we come to God, we come to that place of holiness, we hear the plan and the message of God. And the fortified things, the fortified challenges that are ahead of us, that the bars that you know, cannot be broken through, we need to be reminded that God actually is the God who created. That's why they walked around the walls seven days and seven times on the seventh day to remind them that it was God's, God's creation power. He created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And it would remind them that this is the power of God at work. And it will remind us that God in his ridiculousness is the God who is almighty and who can overcome all obstacles, all challenges, whether they've been seen in the past or never been experienced before. Alongside the ridiculousness of God has to go the ridiculousness of faith of those that follow him. And what I'm just so impressed with Joshua is that Joshua does not question the ridiculousness and the craziness of what God has said to him through the man of God that, was, that encountered him. He doesn't question it at all. He, he, instead, he receives it and then he goes back to the people of Israel and he prepares them for the first day of their walk around the walls. I just, uh, I think I probably would have, <laughs> would have had a few questions about it. Are you sure? Have I got this right? And I do wonder what the elders and the leaders and the people of Israel thought about it. And I kind of got this picture in my head that as they were wandering around the walls, as they were walking around the walls each day, whether as each day passed, they were beginning to think, are we just making fools of ourselves? Are the people of Jericho just laughing at us? However, Joshua's faith and his ability to lead the people in faith, to follow the command of God, however crazy, however ridiculous that command might have seemed, was strong. And he was able to galvanize them and lead them and take them around the walls for six days. And then on that seventh day, do it for seven times. I, I don't know how large Jericho was but I'm sure on the seventh day they were pretty exhausted. But what impresses me is that this group of people, partly through the faith and leadership of Joshua, but also through their own faith in Yahweh, they just crossed the Jordan River and seen an incredible miracle once again. They get to the end of the command of God and they shout, I assume, with all their might. And they see the power of God at work. I think the challenges that we face that are new to us in the times that are ahead of us are not going to be like Jericho's in that sense, but they are going to be new. And sometimes God will say to us to do things and to follow a path that seems very different to the way that we have done it before in the past. But if we follow God and we trust him and we place our faith in him and we lead others to walk that journey, I believe God will not let us down. Joshua did not believe God would let him down. And I believe God will not let us down. May the people of God and those that lead them have great faith in the God of the ridiculous. May their faith be as ridiculous as his commands and may they follow in his direction. Being faithful to the end and may God do what only God can do.